short stories, memoir, um, kids books, graphic novels, like they compiled a great series of content. My outlook is open book, never in the story. When it's a bit in the level post, but I'm a trophy. Victory is brief. How can I bask in the Yeah, you went to the Gemini Inc. Um, to the writing conference? Did you like it? Yeah. Yeah. I did too. I went this year. It was really, really awesome. Um, so just a place to just get somebody to look at your writing to learn a little bit more about the craft. And I'm trained as a math teacher, so I felt like I love to write, I love to read stories, but I just want to just jump in with a little bit of the support first, you know? So I started a women's group there, and I came to San Antonio about three months ago, and I Googled and there was no black writers community out here. And I'm hungry for a black community. I didn't really have it in Austin. So that's the need I felt. You know how you read self-help books and you just be like, oh wow. This is just changing my life. But no, no, it's really, really sinking in and really, really giving me some good tidbits. And one of the things I saw continually in all the things that I was reading was just do it. The whole concept, you can research how to craft the perfect plot <coughs> arc and develop the deepest, most thoughtful characters. And you can read and read all the books, but at the end of the day, it's doing it, you know? And I love watching Kevin because he's consistently out there doing it. Um, you're an MC, you're putting out 100 new songs um, for the next 100 days. So he's been um, making music for a long time. So he's, he's out there on Insta. Where are you publishing your 100 things? On your blog? Yeah, on my website. On his website. Mm -hmm. um, he's got a book that he's selling. I see him constantly posting about his book readings, his book signings. Hey, hi Kevin. Thanks for coming. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, you ready to read a little bit? Yeah. Um, what I wanted was if you can get like a little, because you read it. Yeah. I always like hearing what people think of it. And so, what is your summary on what you think of it? Okay. So he wrote this psychological thriller and it's this guy that you want to just root for. He's <clears throat> handsome, he's sexy, he's brilliant, and he's <laughs> caught up with these with this interesting situation and this passionate drive to change the world and get better. So there's this overarching theme about control and what happens when you start to tinker with the world because but I really love it because I'm pretentious as hell. And I think that my way is the best way. And I fell on my butt and learned that I need to shut up and listen and truly honor all the different ways that people can find enlightenment, that people can find truth, and that people can help themselves. So this guy's trying to help. He's just trying to help. And he makes a mess. And his whole world falls apart because he's just trying to just be in control when really he's not, right? Yeah. It's a good book. Cool. Thank you. Uh, yes, my name is um, Kevin Prince. I'm a self published uh, author and an MC. And I have my first work of fiction, uh, Ideas of Illusion. And the little backstory about this book is I wrote it a couple of years ago. The rough draft just needed to get the idea in general out, and the idea in general ended up being like 70 something pages. And then from there, it was just chopping it down, and it took two years to edit. Um, but, you know, my backstory is in writing in general ever since elementary school. And for some reason, I felt like I couldn't do music and write. I didn't even put two or two together until, you know, after I went through my own um, journey. I had stopped eating meat about a little over three years ago. I dropped over 100 pounds. And um, within that, this <laughs> basically my struggles with depression, um, uh, suicidal thoughts, all of that was fictionalized into this futuristic psychological thriller. You know, so um, a little synopsis that I wrote for it. Um, what happens when your dream becomes a nightmare and your nightmare becomes your reality? 
That is the case for business owner software developer Daniel King. Once on top of the world of online security with this program bubble, he finds himself watching his hard work crumble beneath his feet. A life-changing encounter with a mysterious woman sends off a domino effect for Daniel's life, bringing more business than he can imagine. Now financially secure, he wants to use his money to change the world for the good of everyone. He maps out a seemingly impossible plan that undermines the government, but finds the cost for such an idea could be everything Daniel loves. What price is worth paying for an idea of a better tomorrow? And so the part that I want to read, because the theme is healing, you know, community healing, and um, healing on a micro and macro scale, um, um, I want to expand on that a little bit. So the theme, just like you said, is healing on the micro and macro, and we'll expand that to the black community. So we do our own work, right? We check in with ourselves. We have our spiritual lives, whatever we do to bring healing for ourselves. And what would that look like for the black community? So that's our question for this session. What does healing look like for us as a whole? Yes. <laughs> And um, pretty much, you know, with with any type of healing, there is a core, you know, before you get to whatever religion or whatever your beliefs or anything, before that, when you take those away, there's still a part of you that exists, you know, and that's the part that is usually hurting, you know, that trickles off and everything else. And so when, um, when I wrote this book, that was, I've always used writing as a form of healing, you know, you know with music, you know, everything that made me angry, everything that made me sad, happy, it was just turning it into a legit song. So, you know, 11, you know, 12, 15, whatever was going on, the best were breakup songs. Like, I got the most emotion from that, but, you know, it was just being able to channel that emotion into any type of writing form. And, um, with this healing aspect, um, the character himself, you know, it starts off, the book itself starts off with him contemplating suicide, you know, and I thought that it was very important to start it off with that because, you know, there's a whole other book left, you know, so it just starts it off with him contemplating the end. And so um, in this third chapter, he just had, you know, one night stand with a woman who was you know, kind of out of the norm, and he ends up getting hit by a car. And so he's in this coma. And so within this coma, he is seeing all different types of stuff. And um, the part that I wanna read from there is gonna be where he's asking these questions on whether he's even alive or not. Um, and so, is this hell? Daniel questioned as everything descended into darkness. Dan collapsed to his knees for what seemed like an eternity. At the corner in the distance, a light shot out and the night sky surrounded him. Before Daniel could grasp reality, he emerged on top of the same hotel roof he stood the night before, surrounded by five-footed figures with no faces and no feet. They appeared to hover above ground. Standing smack in the center of them, he demanded, who are you? What do you want? They repeated what he said back to him. Who are you? What do you want? As if the choice was Daniel's. Is it my choice? Daniel got up and tried to walk forward, but his hands and feet melted into the ground with every movement. Daniel closed his eyes and one of the hooded figures whispered, those who release control have it. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Daniel saw. The sound of his questions echoed around him. Daniel's weightless consciousness tried to decide if he was dreaming or perhaps he really was dead, and his ghost ghostly body consciousness floated in nothingness. He always wondered what it would be like after death. Daniel wasn't convinced people ceased to exist or have thoughts. He didn't distinguish if consciousness remained the same minus a physical body. Are we different versions of the same thing? What if we're all an idea, Daniel wondered. What now? The echo of his self danced around his ears. Who are those hooded people? Repeated in his head. He remained in a state of nothingness. Daniel was in no rush. Where would he even go? Those who release control have it? Why tell me that? I did not try to control anyone. The only thing I tried to do is control my life and look how that turned out. Flashbacks of the church were surfaced on his mind. Why would they do that? Over me? 
He wanted to cry, scream, and move his arms, something, but he felt nothing. Daniel existed through his memories, darkness, and questions. Am I asking the right questions? He speculated. At that moment, he noticed a breeze across his right cheek. A rush of sensation burst through him for an instant. Something pulled him into the breeze. Do I even want to go back? The breeze blew stronger, and at that time, a faint beam of light appeared. Only that faint light was visible. Daniel tried to move towards it to shine light on himself, but the light moved through him as if he did not exist. He continued being pulled by the force of the sporadic breeze toward the never-ending trail of light for hours. Another rush of sensation accumulated in his body again. This time it was physical. His fists now clenched and his arms visibly stretched out. Where am I? Can I go back? Have I left, he thought. The breeze became still and the light disappeared. Is anybody there? Daniel hollered. The unknown force pulled and so Daniel realized he was falling. He screamed, help, help. Daniel remained afraid, anxious, and gasped for air. Why won't you stop, Daniel yelled. He came to a sudden halt. Daniel opened his eyes, blinded by the morning sun warming his face. He stretched his arms like he had the best nap of his life. No dirty shirt or bloody legs. He laid in a hospital gown with an IV in his left arm. Daniel looked around to find himself in a hospital room. He tried to get a grasp of what happened. The moment he tried to re recollect any earlier thoughts on what he experienced, they drifted away. He didn't get up or move. He looked around the room a few times and stared at the ceiling. Start us off on where does the where does the theme for control come from? Um, it came from the idea that you know we outside of us we always think that we know best. You know, um, we always try to you know a lot of people try to maneuver through and say it should be this way or this way on a lot of our instead of just what works for you, you know, in your own life, in your own body, you know. Um, and that's what, you know, I wanted to go through. We have different uh, political systems and you have, you know, different parties and this way says this way is correct and this way says that this is correct. And they're speaking for a whole group of people, you know, and they do that, you know, but we on the minor scale to try to do that in our everyday lives versus, you know, what we can control, which is our actions. Right. You know, so that's where that right, right. Um, I've talked to a lot of people about what to do with the black community. Um, and the answer is often like, we gotta work on ourselves. We gotta heal ourselves and then show up for the community in a way that's positive and, and progressive and healing. And you're right, we all have different ideas and I think this is like the perfect environment, writers together, to talk about what ideas do you guys have for progress in the black community, what would that look like? And view their products and their services as more valuable when we had our own. I mean, in that book, you had this dude, he literally rebuilt his he rebuilt his wealth twice. He you mean J.B. Stratford? Is that who you mean? Right. He lost. His great granddaughter is coming here. Really? To take the flyer before y'all leave. His oh, great granddaughter will be here. Oh, yeah. You can interview yeah. her yeah. if you want to because she has his records and memoirs. I love Who's your publisher? What was that? Who's your publisher? Um, Wild Horse Media. Okay. They're in Dallas. They're in Dallas. Okay. I, I, I got to go back to Carver Branch, but, I, but this is beautiful. I walked in this room and I was like, oh my God, am I. I don't, I, I take that the way I mean. We we just yeah. we always did six percent. We always at six percent. So I'm just happy that you know to, to meet writers. Um, briefly, come to Carver Branch. Mm -hmm. This is okay. Have y'all heard of Carver Literary Arts? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's one writers group. Okay, then you got the there's another Black writers group that launched last week and now here. So be aware of each other. I really like this group. Y'all are young though. Um, is anybody 40 in here? No. 
Then was, anybody in here 50? Well, bad. okay, well, okay, I'm a grandpa. But <laughs> <laughs> take a flyer, because we're celebrating Zora yeah. Neale Hurston. Yeah. We're having a whole week of Zora events. And the reason why I, I, I really was lashing onto what you were speaking about is because there are different themes that, that are uh, sessions that are going to be uh, addressed at that what conference. Is she she'll she's be coming. she will be speaking at on the Black Townships session at what time is that? It looks like it's one o'clock in the afternoon. Black it's, Townships. No, she's Edenville, e, no, Edenville okay. and beyond historic Great. African American townships with Dr. Carrie Latimore Saturday, of Trinity. Saturday, so it'll be Saturday. At, is it three? Looks like Eatonville Beyond, Historic African American Township, Black Wall Street, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday, October 28th. Okay, and then so also going to be speaking, Dr. Kerry Lattimore will be speaking on his research on the township in Seneca, New York, mm -hmm. and Miss Straff will be speaking about her, uh, her great grandpa. Right. So I'm headed back, but I'm, I'm so happy that y'all uh, are doing this. Wild Horse, that's good. There's a, there's a publishing company in uh, Jade Publications. You met the publisher, so I'm sending you. You spoke to him. I um, emailed him. Okay, he told me to give you his regards. Also, I bring you regards from the San Antonio African American Museum and Community Archive. Say camp. Did I get that right? S A A A C A M. Did y'all know we have a museum here? No, no. Yeah, we do. <laughs> and the vice president sends you regards. They were, last month we were training people. We had uh, Dr. Carita Brown, a dynamic sister, come down from UCLA, and she was teaching us how to do oral history so we could gather stories. So we got to let, let's keep this going. Do you have a card for some time? Oh, a lot of cards. <laughs> Yes, okay. this is awesome. Yes. Um, Coming to Carver Library. So mm -hmm. thank you all for allowing me. Please be here, everybody. Please show up and support this event. We're celebrating the uh, Zora Neale Hurston's the 80th anniversary. With your eyes, we're watching God. It's a literary conference. No library has ever done this, so we need for this to be a success. <laughs> your sure historical, okay. your historical George Washington Carver Branch. Y'all got that. George Washington Carver know. Branch. Mm -hmm. yes. So, oh. come. Okay. Say it one more time. October. Is this is this Carver Center near the Carver Ideas School and did nobody know? No, this is different. I know what I'm We'll get you guys there. I'm going to make sure that we do. I will make sure that we do a couple of these that I, I'm going to advertise all of it on Meetup, but I, the ones I can go to, we'll make a Meetup event for it. For sure. So it'll be on Meetup, it'll be on Facebook. And congratulations. I've seen that book before. Yes, uh, yeah. I have seen it. I think I bought it because yes. you were at the Pan African celebration that we had. Hint, hint. We have a Pan African celebration. Sure all this <laughs> ethnic stuff is a Carmel Ranch. How them You know, James Baldwin for his time, um, you know, he was a gay black male, you know, so that was definitely shunned upon, you know, no matter if, no matter what he was speaking, and he still went, you know, hard for the black community, you know, as far as uh, pushing through. And I think that at the end of this book, the last couple of paragraphs, I think, really shows as far as how there can be healing in a whole and that it, it's it's everyone's involvement you know so that's so. yeah um this whole f this whole book reads like a couple a few letters i think it's two or three letters and he just really hits home what his journey was as a young man through puberty coming into manhood learning that he is a writer dealing with a dad who didn't have a very who just I'll describe it this way. His dad had this peg way of the way he wanted his son to be.